hi guys welcome to today's video today i'm going to teach you how to clean your backgrounds after taking your photo shoot sometimes it would be the best to uh, sort of iron your backdrop before you do the photo shoot but sometimes you don't really have the time to do it because there is um, a method that i'm going to teach you that can be used to sort of clean your backdrops after you do the photo shoot um the method i'm going to be using is using the frequency separation method that's the first method i'm going to teach using the mixer brush tool the second method might be a bit complex Depend on, I mean, it's a matter of perspective which one that you would prefer. And that method will be using the Gaussian blur tool. So using the frequency separation method, the first thing I'm going to do is to create a duplicate of this layer, which you can just do by pressing Command or Control J. Then I'm going to name this um, layer it's just a copy. I can just name it image. Then I'm going to create two copies of this image layer. So I'm going to name this um, sort of color, just like the normal frequency separation method. And I'm going to name this texture then what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the color layer come to filter blur gaussian blur and i'm just going to blur with a radius of 10. it should work i guess it should work for pretty much every image because we're not going to do any detailed stuff here then the second stage i'm going to select the texture layer i'm going to come to image i'm going to come to apply image then from this menu i'm going to select the color layer that's the that's why i had to rename the layers before i did i'm going to choose color then the blending mode, I'm going to choose subtract. This is not something I, I, I mean, this frequency separation method was already generated or discovered by someone. So the, the parameters that I'm using here is something that I generated myself. It's something that has already been used by all photographers. So scale of 2, opacity 100, offset 1 to 8. I don't know why these parameters are being used, but that's what seems to work. So I'll click OK. Then the best thing that I do is to try to organize my stuff. So I'll I'll group these two layers by selecting them and pressing Ctrl G. I'm just going to rename this to uh, image, uh, sorry, background black. So um, after that, I'm going to select this texture layer, then I'm going to blend it, turn it to linear light. So I'm going to sort of, the frequency separation sort of just splits the picture into the texture and the color layer so that you can edit them independently. So um, this is how you can do it if you want to use the tedious method to sort of generate this frequency separation layer. A quick method that I would always recommend, which makes the process very easy, is to just use actions, okay? So I have one photographer who has generated an action for creating frequency separation that I can just share with you for you to use. So I'm just going to sort of delete what I did here, or I can just create um, a history. Delete this folder. I'm going to call this layer then... I'm teaching the method using the action. So I'm going to give you a link to the action that you can download the action and import into Photoshop. So when you import it, this is what the action gives you. Just click frequency separation 18 bits. I'm going to use a radius of 10. Okay, so you see that it makes the whole process faster. We didn't need to do all the complications of creating the frequency separation layer. So straight into the video, what we're going to do is we're going to first turn off the high frequency layer, which contains the texture. Then I'm going to zoom into this. I mean, this is where I'm going to be working on primarily because I'm just dealing with the background. This is what I want to teach in this video. Um, I'm going to use the Mixer Brush tool. So I'll select the Mixer Brush tool from the Brush options here. If you don't find it, just right click and choose Mixer Brush. Another way that you can do it is to just press Shift B so you get to the Mixer Brush tool because sometimes it's a bit tedious to get this window here. So if you select the Mixer Brush tool, I'm going to use a width of 5, load 75, mix 90, flow 100. Everything sort of remains the same. What you should take note of is that this is checked, this is not checked, okay? So the, the brush side is going to be on, depend on what you're going to be cleaning with. Um, I would go a bit deeper into the image by pressing Z and zooming in, yeah? And I'm going to select the Mesa Brush tool now. You can reduce or increase the size of your brushes by the square brackets. Left square brackets, right square brackets, or you can press Alt and right click. If you move the mouse right, it goes bigger. If you move it up and down, the hardness changes, okay? So just turn the brush size to the size that you'd want it to be and just paint. Turn off the high frequency layer and just paint because what the Mixer Brush tool is, it's a very powerful tool. It just blends all the colors in so that you don't really see much of the the, the dirty sort of unclean background that you had at the beginning. So I'm just going to brush. You can see that it's it's really blending in all the colors. And this would work irrespective of which color that you're working with. So long as your backdrop has a uniform color, it's going to work. What a mixer brush tool does is that it sort of blends in all the colors 
in the spot or mixes actually just what the mixer brush it mixes all the colors in the areas where you are painting so because i have a one sort of one color backdrop it makes the process very easy if i had a multi-color backdrop it might have been a bit difficult i mean the black tones that i'm having here is because i had these solid strips of lines that were present in the background that's it it's done guys let's turn on the high frequency layer and you can see the background is clean this is before this is after it's a very quick method if you if you want to do more cleaning why not i mean you do, it's just a background you can't destroy it you can just clean as much as you want or to a point that you feel sort of satisfied does this guy it's very easy that's my first method i'm going to teach you with the mixer brush tool the second method i don't really like this because it's a bit tedious for me but i'm going to teach you anyway it's a matter of perspective you might actually like to use that method so i'm going to undo everything here by deleting the high frequency, frequency brain layer and I'm going to create a duplicate of this background so control J to duplicate it and I'm going to come to filter that might be the best method for you it is a matter of perspective like I said um, everyone has the way they want to do it so I made a mistake I'm not going to go to the filter what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select the clone stamp tool or oh, another method I can also use this to select I'm going to choose the select tool sorry um quick lasso tool and i'm going to select the image that i have here the whole idea is that i want to be able to have the whole layer sort of turn into a background and let's see if photoshop would be able to um, fill the layer so i'm going to select the selection i'm going to come to fill then i'm going to use content aware let's see if photoshop would be able to separate the background from the objects so let's wait and see what photoshop gives us oh brilliant work so photoshop bled for us so i'm now going to press ctrl d the best method that I, I recommend is to convert this right click and convert it to smart object so that you can always edit it if you feel like your blur was too much then select the blur so i'm going to just name this bled background select the bled background layer come to filter blur and Gaussian blur so there's sort of a life effect you actually see how much the image is being blurred so just blur it to a point that you feel like you don't see this is what it would look like before blur it to a point where you don't see the lines anymore so now you can see that the background the backdrop is sort of um, clean the reason why I chose the um, smart object is that now I can if I feel like it's too much I can always edit it back to where I want it to okay so that's why I like to use a smart object. Sometimes it makes the, si the file size a bit bigger, but it's worth it. So now I've bled the background. Then I'm going to press the Alt and press the Mask layer. So you're going to press Alt and press Mask. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to paint in where I want the background to appear. So I'm going to press, go to the Normal Brush. We have to change to the Normal Brush by clicking right click and choosing the Brush tool. My flow is at um, five percent I will just change it to 100 then I'm going to increase the size of the brush then white means reveal black means um, conceal so if you over here if you have white you're on a good side if you have black just press X to switch between the black and white should you happen to have some odd color like red here or any other color here what you can do is that you can just press D to reset the colors here and switch to white so now with a white selector with your brush at opacity 100 and flow 100, I'm just going to paint in. So I'm just going to paint where I want this to be reviewed. This method is pretty easy too. But the reason why I'm, I don't like it sometimes, I mean it's a matter of perspective. Like the reason why I sometimes prefer the other method is that I always sometimes kind of blend in into the, a bit go deeper into the, Image because if you blur into the image you can see it destroys it so you have to be very careful especially see how difficult it is for me especially on the on the edges when you have hair it gets more complex so this is scan method guys um, so you can see this was before and this was after these are very two simple methods that you can use to clean your backdrop actually honestly I now don't waste that much time to clean my backdrop I mean if you have the time to iron it before your photo should go cool, but I can just do it very quickly on Photoshop. If you have any comments with respect to this video, just put it in the comments section and I would respond to all the comments that would be um, posed to me. If you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be bringing in periodic um, editing videos to show how 
some of the tricks that I use when I'm doing photo editing. I'm going to later upload an edited version of this image when I'm still working on. I can show you how it looks like when I'm done with the editing. Um, this is so this is, the skin has been retouched. This is before and this after. So I was going to work on the background in the next stages. Thank you very much for tuning in. Subscribe to my channel for more tips on photography. Thank you and have a nice day. See you.